Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Cara Kurtz and I am the Business Development Coordinator at ASTA as well as our ASTA Small Business Network, formerly NACTA, and I will be the organizer for today's presentation. We are happy to welcome today's presenter, Ms. Christina Aldenese from Hawaii Tourism USA. She is their Regional Director and a Travel Industry Partner. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few important features on your screen that will allow you to interact with us via the web today. We will be answering your questions at the end of this presentation. To ask a question, you will be using your GoToWebinar pane. Near the bottom of this pane, there is an area that says questions. If you click the arrow next to where it says questions, it will open up a window pane, and this is what you will be using to communicate with me today. If you're having trouble hearing the presentation, please do make sure that your speakers are turned all the way up. And if that does not rectify the problem, please try hanging up and then dialing back in. You can send me any technical issues via the questions pane and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. And I will also be responding via that same pane. Please note that all audience members are muted. We certainly want to hear from all of you, but with so many people on today's call, background noise would be prohibitive and we want to ensure that everyone can hear Christy's entire presentation. Finally, please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for your on-demand viewing pleasure, not only on our NACTA YouTube channel, but also on ASTA.org by the end of the week. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome Christy. Mahalo, Kara. Aloha, everyone. This is Christy with Hawaii Tourism USA. Uh, today, I'm going to take you on a wiki wiki tour of all the islands. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to uh, decipher which customer is best for which island. Okay, so pairing the right customer with the correct island. So today, we're going to present Hawaii's unique experiences. Our agenda, why Hawaii? I think that's so important to all of you. Then we're going to take each island individually, Kauai, Oahu, Maui Nui. Maui Nui consists of Maui, Molokai, and Lanai, and the island of Hawaii. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Hawaii Rooted. That's our new advertising campaign uh, that we just started, and travel professional resources. Okay, why Hawaii? It's actually the number one aspirational destination for North American travelers. And this year we had record-breaking arrivals for all the islands. And we have a 98% approval rating. This is kind of unprecedented. Usually you'll hear 85, 90, and everybody's happy with that. But no, Hawaii has a 98% approval rating. And 90% of all visitors express the likelihood to return to the islands. So how does this benefit you? It means future business because they'll go back time and time again. Okay, today's consumers seek unique, authentic, and experiential travel. Hawaii definitely delivers in this category. If you look over here to your left-hand side, this is Pu'u Honua, Oho Now Now, south of Kona, located on the Big Island. This is where our ali'i, ali'i means royalty, this is where they first dwelled. So you can actually visit this site. It is still there. And as as far as experiencing things that are cultural to the islands, many times our visitors will get lay greeted by the locals or perhaps on the right hand side, you can go to an organic farm, pick the produce and this is what you're actually going to have for your lunch. And for those of you who love to garden, you know that when it's picked fresh, there is a difference and it is the best. We have six islands with six experiences. Each island has its own unique personality. So depending on what your customer is looking for, um, then you can, again, pair them with the correct island. Okay, unique history and culture. We do have multicultural experiences through historic and archaeological sites, as you see here. Okay, this is an artisan. He's at Pu'uho Noa Oho now, which, now, now, which I told you about earlier. We have royal palaces and museums throughout the islands. In fact, we have 92 museums. The most important would be the Bishop Museum, which is located on our main island of Oahu. We have festivals going on throughout the year. It's just not maybe September or maybe December. It's, it's every month throughout the year. And a lot of our festivals depict the culture of the Hawaiian islands. So that's what's really cool. When your clients go to Hawaii, they can see festivals like, 
last month we had the Loha festivals which celebrated all of the Hawaiian islands. We have culinary experiences. You know that in Hawaii we love to eat and the Aloha spirit. The Aloha spirit is actually ingrained in us from the time we're very, very young. In fact, my mother used to say, don't say that unless you really mean it. And I used to say, oh, I mean it. Okay, aloha means hello and goodbye with love and affection. Or if you're entering one of my classes and I say to you, aloha, what I'm saying is that I'd like to be your forever friend. We have unmatched diversity of activities and experiences. We have a lot of uh, water sports and toward the upper right-hand side on the summit of Mauna Kea on the Big Island, we have 13 observatories from 13 different countries. You can actually go stargazing. And toward the bottom left, we do have active volcanoes, to say the least, on the Big Island as well, waterfalls throughout, and helicopter tours. Now let's take you to the island of Kauai. It's known to be the Garden Island. And what you're looking at is the Napali coastline toward the north west end of the island you they're taking a little coastal tour there and they're going to look inland at all these beautiful majestic cliffs okay Kauai's personality it's lush idyllic it has endless shades of green it's for those customers who have an aversion to crowds they rather just go and enjoy the relaxed pace that Kauai has to offer Okay, again, this is the Napali coastline. Keep in mind that Kauai is the oldest of all the islands. So as you can see by those cliffs, it's very weather beaten toward the west end of the island. Okay. And then we have Opaika'a Falls. There's waterfalls throughout the islands, but this is a famous fall located on the island of Kauai. Once again, you're going to feel like you're in your own personal paradise. It's for those who just love to enjoy the natural beauty that this island has to offer. And being the garden island, it has a lot of botanical gardens located on Kauai as well. You can immerse yourself in Kauai's natural beauty. Go river kayaking up the Wailua River. The Railua River is the only navigable river in all the islands. Kauai has over five zip line adventures. So if you have a thrill seeker and they want to see the islands from a different perspective, this would be very good to offer. And mountain tubing. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's unique. It's different. It's something that your customers will go back and tell their family and friends about. And now with social media, they can see what they're doing real time. So these um, mountain tubing it's um, a few miles of irrigation ditches that the Japanese built to irrigate the cane fields on the island of Kauai. So you just drift down in this rainforest, you see all the flora and fauna, and you just think, wow, this is heaven. And uh, there's going to be a certain point where the water will hit a mountain. But that's not the end of the tour. You're going to go through that mountain, come out the other side, which makes it adventurous. Don't worry, you won't drown. It's only about, oh, three to four feet deep. The water comes down from the mountains and you just kind of drift down with the natural current. So these are a lot of different outdoor activities that they can enjoy on Kauai. And Hanapepe Town, that's toward the south end of Kauai, it's known for food and fun, art and music. And if you look at the architecture there, it really has that plantation feel. You can buy Made in Hawaii products. Uh, now we take you to the island of Oahu. As you can see, the landscape is a little different from Kauai. It's a vibrant mid-Pacific hub. It has town and country appeal because, yes, you have the very famous resort area of Waikiki. You have Diamond Head over here in the background. Toward your foreground, you'd have the Hawaii Convention Center. And, of course, this is Waikiki. Waikiki Beach and the Alawai Canal. But if you go over toward the windward side of Oahu, it's going to take you uh, to Ho Oahu's past. It has a more uh, country appeal, completely different from the south end. All right, Oahu's personality. It definitely has a lot of energy. It has a lot of um, iconic landmarks like Diamond Head, a lot of surfing that goes on there, um, arts and culture, natural beauty. And this is Waikiki. The reason why I bring this up is because a few years ago, it went through a multi-billion dollar uh, beautification project. And um, being born on Oahu, I kind of panicked when I heard that they were going to restore Waikiki. But you know what? It's the best it has ever been in my entire lifetime. I've been around for a while. Um, 
for those of you who already know me. All right, so Waikiki, um, they worked with Kamehameha Schools. That's a private school that perpetuates Hawaiian culture. They made sure to put the tradition and the history back into the resort area. For example, over here towards your upper left-hand side, that's the old Lure Street. Look at it today. It's called the Waikiki Beach Walk. And um, if they took out coconut trees to build the old Lure Street, they put back twice as many as they took out because in Hawaiian culture, you give back more than what you take away. And at the main entrance of Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center, they bulldozed that whole area out and they put the legendary Helamoa Grove of the 1800s back into the resort area. So as you're walking through all these beautiful shops, upscale shops and restaurants, all of a sudden you go back to the late 1800s. Keep in mind, Waikiki was the playground for the elite. This is where they met. So once again, every evening, you have Hawaiian entertainment that is going on. You know, the locals can do what we used to do in years past, and our visitors can enjoy it and just really partake of the tradition that we used to do. And it's free. Not everything they say, well, Hawaii can be expensive, but no, we're doing these cultural activities every evening in the Waikiki area. The international marketplace is now open, and of course, I panicked about that too. But now it is so beautiful. It is very open air. They kept the banyan tree. They have great shops and restaurants. Um, it's a lot brighter. And if you see it, you will love it as well. Even for those skeptics who have seen it um, after I've seen it, they had to send me an email and say how much they really love it. They definitely kept with the tradition of the marketplace. And then now we go on. Now you're seeing a different view. Now you're on the North Shore of Oahu. This is where the Triple Crown Surfing Contest takes place every November, depending on the conditions of the waves. Okay, so you've got Waimea Bay, Sunset Beach, Laniakea, Chun's Reef, pipeline it's all there on the north shore and while you're there you might want to tell your customers to definitely stop at the north shore shrimp trucks tell me about it i mean it is like sauteed shrimp fresh shrimp sauteed in butter and garlic rice mac salad mm -mm -mm. it is the best everybody loves it and then of course they can go to the many beaches out on the north shore or visit Waimea Valley well they'll see a lot of flora and fauna unique to the islands and some of them are actually endangered also on the north shore you do have a new zipline adventure at Kaena Farms and you have hikes and they've kind of restored Haleiwa town as well but don't worry everybody it still has that Haleiwa appeal of the north shore you know with the tie-dye t-shirts the incense kind of like a kind of reminds you like of the hippie place but very modern and then you can still get your um, shave ice out there as well don't worry rainbow flavor is the best and on the North Shore, for those who are interested in history and culture, we know that 80% of those who uh, go on vacation want to do something cultural or historic in their vacation. Well, who delivers in this category? Towards your upper right-hand side, you do have Iolani Palace. Okay, our second to the last monarch, David Kalakaua, known as the Merry Monarch, actually had it built. And once he passed away, our last monarch, Queen Lilio Kalani, this is where she resided. She was actually put under house arrest um, as she became a threat to the business owners. But after it was decided that she would live peacefully, of course, she was released. You can go to Iolani Palace and see the original coal wood floor, etched glass, and um, see how they lived. And some of the original furniture is coming back to the palace as well. And then towards your bottom left, that's the Bishop Museum, located in Kalihi, not too far from the airport, has the largest accumulation of Hawaiian artifacts. It's been refurbished as well, and um, their largest collection of Pacific and Polynesian artifacts and exhibits in the world. And toward the north shore of Oahu in Laie, you do have Polynesian Culture Center. Probably a lot of you have already visited the Culture Center, but if you haven't done so within the past two or three years, make sure you go back again because they went through a $38 million renovation. This is great value for your customer because if they're on Oahu for only three or four days, you can do it all in one day. For example, Waikiki to the North Shore, 
mini Circle Island tour. You get to see the Culture Center and relive seven recreated South Pacific Island villages. It's like you're walking through Polynesia, it's like a living museum. After that, you can either have a buffet dinner or a li'i, which means royal, luau, which means feast. Everybody who goes to Hawaii wants to have a luau. They won the Kahili Award for preserving Hawaiian culture with their luau. And in the evening time, you have an evening extravaganza called Ha, H-A, Ha, which means the breath of life. An hour and a half show featuring all the different cultures from Tahiti, from Samoa, uh, from Tonga, from Hawaii, from the Marquesas, from New Zealand. They all come out and entertain you one of the best Polynesians review throughout Hawaii. So, there it is. Great value. Mini Circle Island, Polynesian Culture Center, Luau, evening show with the fire knife dancing, and the ancient um, Kahiko or the Tamaray the Tahitians are doing. All in one day. Keep in mind that the Culture Center is closed on Sunday. They're open Monday through Saturday only. Okay? And now we're on the island of Maui, sophisticated down-home appeal. They're known to be the Valley Isle. A lot of people like to spend their honeymoons here, get married here. It's very romantic, as you can see, by this lovely waterfall. And um, again, Maui's personality has a lot of charming small town. Everybody just kind of explores it as a at a leisurely pace, small adventures, a lot of local artisans. In fact, in Lahaina, a lot of the local artists like to display their artwork there. Okay, the road to Hana, and you have over here the pools at Ohio. This is the back of Haleakala where they have terraces of waterfalls that are actually coming down. Okay, speaking of the road to Hana, uh, I love the road to Hana. I think it's beautiful. I think it's extremely scenic. Depending on where you start out from, it's about 57 miles long. But if you look at the upper right-hand side of your screen there, it has about a little over 567 hairpin turns and curves in that road. So tell your customers to allow an entire day, take it at a slow pace. When you see a sign that says Black Sand Beach, Park your car, hike in an eighth of a mile, you will be in your own personal paradise. Think of it like a fine dining meal. You have your appetizer, your main course, and then your dessert. You don't scarf it down or you're going to get sick. If you try to do this road really quickly, you'll probably get motion sickness as well. Now, for those of you, because customers go to travel agents today for their expertise and their advice. So if you know they're going to do the road to Hana, forget the compact car. They might want an open-air Jeep, convertible, or SUV, something very airy. But when they see all the beautiful waterfalls and Black Sand Beach and pools at O'Hale, it's bamboo forest. They go through that um, wetland forest as well. It's absolutely incredible. The views is something that's never going to leave their mind. Don't rush it. Take your time. All righty, so then we go on to Lahaina. This is like one of my favorite places. This is where I get my handmade plumeria soap, right here in Lahaina. Again, a lot of local artists like to display their work here. You have great shops and restaurants. You can't see, but you see the couple. Right past that sidewalk is actually the water. How amazing is that? Okay, so if you want a great dinner, you want good shopping, everybody, you can't leave Maui without going to Lahaina. It used to be a historic whaling village, but today they've restored it. As a matter of fact, before Honolulu became our state capital, Honolulu, of course, is located on Oahu. Lahaina was our capital, but no longer. It's on Oahu now. Now you're looking inside the crater of Haleakala. That's the main mountain that kind of makes up uh, the island of Maui. Okay, Haleakala means house of the sun. They're known for their sunrise tours. You're looking inside the crater, which is about 21 miles in diameter. It's so huge, you can fit Manhattan in there. But look at those views. You're going to feel like you're on a different planet. But you're not. You're on Haleakala. It's about 10,000 feet high. Once again, known for their sunrise tours. If they do take a sunrise tour, up. Uh, Advise your clients to do it during the beginning of their vacation because they're going to be picked up at 2.30 a.m. 
And so if they're going to be up anyway because of jet lag, depending on where they came from, they might as well uh, go to Haleakala, not pace their room and wait for sunrise, but go watch sunrise over the house of the sun. And don't forget upcountry Maui. You do have a beautiful scenery. Upcountry is right at the base of Haleakala. Ali'i Kula Lavender Farm, Surfing Goat Dairy, Maui's Winery. This used to be Tedeschi Vineyards, but now it's known as Maui Winery. You can do this all in one day. And, oh, pretty soon it's going to be the humpback whale season. These are the majestic humpback whales. They live in Alaska. They come down to the Hawaiian waters during the winter time. So they should be arriving late November, maybe early December. I don't know because they don't have their 800 line set up yet. Uh, and then they're going to leave late April or early May. These are the humpbacks, very popular. Here's another tip. If you have customers going to the island of Maui, and maybe they're going to stay on the west side, Ka'anapali area, guaranteed um, humpback whale sightings, especially during the morning time. So if, they're, if you book them at a hotel, say it's going to be a garden view, you might want to offer maybe an ocean view or ocean front because let them know the whales are going to be out there. And even if they say no, at least they knew that you knew the humpbacks are out there. Once again, they're looking to you for your expertise and your advice. Whale watching during the winter. Now we're on the island of Molokai, the friendly isle. It's for those who want to go back to Hawaii's past. It may not be for everybody, but for some people, they absolutely love it and they just gravitate toward Molokai. Once again, it's for those who are looking for old rustic Hawaii. They're still extremely steeped in their tradition. There's no traffic lights on Molokai. So when you land at the Ho'olehua Molokai Airport, you'll see a sign that says, Aloha, slow down, you're on Molokai. And they're going to have dinner. They better do it early because there's not that many places to um, pick from or that will stay out that late uh, like Oahu does. Okay, so Molokai, it's enlightening, it's um, open roads, no traffic lights, they still practice Hawaiian living. And you can talk stories with the local, ohana, which means family, is very important to them. So you can see that towards your bottom left-hand side, they have beautiful beaches, and that's a very famous Molokai mule ride, as you can see towards your bottom right-hand side right over here. It takes you down to Kalau Papa, where Father Damien took care of the people who were stricken with um, Hansen's disease or leprosy. They brought them to Kalau Papa because if you notice those tall sea cliffs and the very strong currents of the Molokai Channel, it was very inaccessible. They felt that they couldn't contain the disease in that particular area. That's a whole different webinar. And I think I'm running out of time, so we've got to move on. All right, you have Halava Valley. You see over here on the little map, okay, toward the east side. This is Halava Valley, Taro Patches. There's waterfalls in there. And then you have Papohaku Beach toward the west end. And, of course, the sea cliffs on the north side of Molokai. Now we take you to the island of Lanai. It's known to be the secluded island. It has um, one very upscale resort that's a Four Seasons, okay, Manelli Bay. And as far as the lodge at Koele, uh, some of you might remember that. It's a beautiful lodge with, oh, just breathtaking views, um, gorgeous to look at, very relaxing. Well, it's being renovated now, and they're going to turn that into a wellness center, Okay, so you will have Manelli Bay Resort, but you'll also have Koele, which is now going to be a wellness center. And trust me, as soon as it's done, I'll have to go check it out so I can explain it to all of you. Twist my arm on that one. This is the Pu'upe'e Sweetheart Rock right over here. This beach is Hulopoe Bay. That's toward the south end of Lanai. Okay, and in fact, from Manelli Bay Resort, you can access Hulopoe Bay, which was named the best beach in America in 1999 by Dr. Beach. Okay, it's known for its solitude, serenity, you're pampered, peaceful and quiet, relaxed but not bored, active but not overdone. All right, so you can go to Shipwreck Beach, 
Um, you can also see Keahia Cavello Nature Preserve, known as Garden of the Gods, known for its unique rock formation. This is the lodge at Coeli, which is now being restored into a wellness center, also part of the lodge right over here towards your bottom left. Um, this is Manelli Bay, Four Seasons, right over here. This is Hula Boy Bay. Remember I told you you can access it right from that resort? And towards your upper right-hand side on that little map, it's toward the south end of Lanai. You can also hike up the historic Monroe Trail, and you can see all the outer islands if it's a clear day. Okay, and then that location is right over here, Monroe Trail. And then this is Shipwreck Beach, toward, also toward the south end. I told you about those strong currents. Well, some of those older ships got shipwrecked. They also have sporting clays, ATV tours, horseback riding. There's a lot of things to do on Lanai, but again, it's not that um, densely populated. Now we're going to take you to our most southern island and the youngest island, the island of Hawaii. Its nickname is called the Big Island. Okay, so it is the youngest of all the islands, still growing because of our active volcano, Kilauea, which is located at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, right here toward the southeast end. Okay, definitely still growing that island. And did you guys know that the this island is so big, you can fit the outer islands in it as well. You can't say you've been there and done that all in one day. It's an island of adventure. It's also an island of history because we believe the Polynesians first landed on the south tip sometime before 500 AD and called it Heavenly Homeland to the North, Hawaii. Now, don't get confused now. The official name of the Big Island is called Hawaii, but the entire state's called Hawaii. So they want to go to the islands. Which island are they talking about? They might be talking about um, Oahu, where Honolulu, our capital is, Pearl Harbor, Waikiki, North Shore. Um, they might not realize that, again, the entire state's called Hawaii, official name of the Big Island, also called Hawaii. There are 13 climate types on the Big Island. It has 11 of the 13. The only thing they don't have, they don't have the Saharan, they don't have the Arctic. The reason why is because as you ascend up over 13,300 feet, you go through different climate zones. Okay. Okay, they have active volcanoes, stargazing, lava fields, diverse by nature. That's its personality. It's also um, a lot of Hawaiian culture, tradition, but yet uh, modern. Traditional, but yet modern. So you do have um, beaches on the Big Island, active volcano, which we'll talk about in just a second, night diving with the mantis. How's that? If you have somebody who wants to a uh, night dive with them or go um, uh, snuba, you can actually do that. It's um, located near the Sheraton Keahoe, south of Kona. But once again, something they're going to talk about, Akaka Falls, my favorite, when I was a little girl, my favorite thing to do was to go to Akaka Falls. Hike in a short distance, less than a mile, and then you're in your own tropical paradise, as you can see by that picture, uh, toward the middle, and you can see the beautiful Akaka Falls. A lot of golf courses, in fact, there's championship golf courses throughout all of our islands, and stargazing. If you're having a hard time going up 13,300 feet, you know, you will um, lose 20% of your oxygen. But a lot of times, um, people will actually come to your hotel and set up their telescopes. And some of the resorts have stargazing as well at lower elevations. I would just talk to the concierge of the hotel and set that up for your uh, customer if they need it. History and culture, you got it here. Pu'uho nua, oho nao nao. Again, south of Kona, where the Ali'i first dwelled. You have Hulehe'e Palace which is right in Kona town, but now it's a museum. Kona Coffee Country, that's up in the mountains. When you go up there, you'll see fields of a co a coffee being grown, but you can see the beautiful views of the ocean because you're way up there in the hills. It's going to be a little bit cooler. For all the islands, I do recommend sunscreen of 30 SPF or higher, and, of course, bug spray. Um, when you go to Kona Coffee Country, some places will actually let you roast your coffee. It's kind of like a big roaster, kind of like Jiffy Pop, shaking it so it doesn't burn. But you get to take home your own 100% Kona coffee. Once again, sharing that with their family and friends. They're going to want to do it. And they're going to say, who told you about this? 
my travel advisor. There's a lot of outdoor adventures and dramatic landscapes on the Big Island. They have zipline adventures as well. Keep in mind, all of our four major islands have zipline adventures for your thrill seekers. For um, the cowboys, they can see the Paniolos, Hawaiian cowboys of country on the Big Island. And of course, um, Lava Fields, Anacaca Falls. Oh, explore the universe. This is Mount Akea, the northernmost mountain. Check out that view. If you do take this tour, you will be brought up to the summit, and you'll see the sunset. Everything happens so quickly, and then all the constellations and all the stars will come out. You feel like you're in space because you're way up there, sometimes um, above the clouds. And now we're going to give you a volcano update. Most of you heard on the news earlier this year that uh, Kilauea was erupting and it was and it was quite spectacular they say it happens every 100 years i don't know i'm not a geologist however i can tell you in my lifetime i've never seen anything like that it was absolutely spectacular i just got back from the big island uh, a week ago and everything is calmed down it's exactly the way it was before the eruption but if you log on to you can see this website HawaiiTourismAuthority.org. You'll see a special alert. Alert. You can find out what's happening. Right now, um, I can tell you, I was on the Big Island, and it's absolutely beautiful, breathtaking, sunny, no fog, no nothing. It's the way it was, like when I was growing up. Okay? So I just wanted to let you know that. Once again, that's HawaiiTourismAuthority.org. The volcano, she's quieted down. Madam Pele, our fire goddess, got really upset about something, but she must be happier now. <laughs> All right. keep. This is a map of the Big Island. You can see where Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is toward the southeast end. Think about this, everybody. Even when it was erupting, the Big Island is 4,028 square miles total. The volcano area is only 10 square miles. So, you know, not a lot of the island was being affected. And this is the Kona side. Look at my arrow right here toward the west. That's the airport. Then you've got Kona. you got Kohala area. Then you've got the Hamakua coastline, Hilo. And then the uh, volcano area is about maybe 45 minutes south from Hilo. All right. So once again, I'm going to say it, 4,028 square miles. The volcano area is only... 10 square miles, and only the Puna area was affected. So please, as advisors, calm your customers down. It's beautiful. Um, the island of Hawaii is historic, adventurous, um, beautiful views, rainforest, helicopter tours, uh, stargazing, everything. They need not fear. In fact, I'm a local person. My mother was born up here in Honoka'a, see that where my arrow is? That's by YPO Valley, where King Kamehameha spent part of his childhood. I'm only here to tell you the truth. And like my mother said, you speak of aloha and you practice ho'okipa, Hawaiian lifestyle. Now, Hawaii Rooted. This is our new campaign that we've just launched. Um, I, gosh, I've done this so many years, but I have to say this is one of my favorites called Hawaii Rooted. Keep in mind, everybody, that every story has an origin. This is Hawaii's. These are the people who are keeping Hawaii's local culture and native customs alive. These are the special places where the true spirit of Hawaii lives. These are the authentic stories, and I love that, authentic stories from the mythological to the modern that are inspiring a new generation of Hawaii locals. We're definitely bringing back um, Hawaii Rooted. These are our statewide brand pillars. We talked about this earlier. The spirit of aloha. Did you know that a lot of people come back because they like the Hawaiian lifestyle and the laid back ways that we tend to have? We're sincere, warm, respectful hospitality, diversity, diverse of diversity in cultures and activities, okay? And a lot of natural beauty to enjoy on all the islands. This is Hawaii Rooted. Two and a half um, minute video. Hopefully everything will go good. And uh, enjoy. Relax. It's very spiritual.
In Hawaii, we have a term, kuleana, which means responsibility. To be a kumula, that's a huge kuleana. You know, at one time, the Hawaiian people did not have a written language, and it was the hula that kept all the stories alive. And I take that responsibility of perpetuating the hula very, very seriously. It's your one song of the night. You're only dancing one song. That was absolutely awful. Do it again. The hula is our bridge to the past. The foundation of our Hawaiian people. So I cherish the hula. People say it's hula pastime. Is it a hobby? It's my life. I have this passion for it. There's a time in our history when hula was forbidden. That was a sad time in our history. Everybody comes to halau to really deepen their knowledge and deepen their aloha for our culture. It creates for a really special bond. King Kalakaua said, the hula is the language of the heart. Therefore, the heartbeat of Hawaiian people. So where there is Hawaiian people, there needs to be the hula. Okay, if you had a hard time viewing that, you can see Hawaii Rooted on YouTube, and then just look for Hawaii Rooted dash hula. And if you heard what the commentator, the kumuhula said, Hawaii is the language of the heart, okay? Hula is also the language of the heart. How can you learn more? How can you promote Hawaii? How can we give you resource? Because of technology, Okay, we can actually do that for you. We have a travel agent portal at so up, okay, up above here, agents.gohawaii.com. Okay, that is our travel agent website. Okay, the key features includes e-monthly newsletters. Okay, you'll find out what's new every single month. And for those of you who do take your Hawaii Destination Specialist certification online, you are featured actually on the cover of um, the website. We have a media center with images and videos, and we have the top 10 itineraries by client type. This is going to really help you when you're trying to plan out itineraries. Okay, that would be under our islands, and you see there's a subcategory here toward the uh, left hand side top 10 itineraries. Very easy. If I can navigate through this, anybody can navigate through this. You can actually order island maps. Um, Hawaii Vacation Planners online. It is complimentary. And then the key features includes the festival and events. I think that's so important as advisors to let your customers know what's going on in the islands before they actually leave the mainland. Hawaiian Language Audio Dictionary. This is so cool. If you don't know what a Hawaiian word means, you get the meaning and you also hear the pronunciation. Interactive um, maps, toolkits and images and logos. And our Hawaii Destination Specialist Program is also available online. We have six certifications total, but when you complete certification number one, which is Introduction to Hawaii, and number two, which is Selling Hawaii, um, you actually become certified. Then you can take the rest of the certifications as more in-depth, um, more advanced courses for each individual island. The courses are mobile compatible as well. The certification number one is actually uh, narrated, so it's almost kind of like you're watching a beautiful movie and gorgeous scenery of the island. So please take advantage of that. Become a specialist. Also, you have exclusive benefits, consumer referrals. When people call... Um, when people call into Hawaii Visitors Bureau, we're not selling anything. We are uh, a tourist board. So we'll refer them to you based on your zip code. And keep in mind, the more certifications that you complete, uh, the more higher up on the list that you'll be rotated. 
Okay, we have specialist only webinars, subscription to the Hawaii Magazine, one of my favorites, and continuing education credits through the Travel Institute. You also can use the Hawaii Destination Specialist logo, which is toward your bottom left hand side. I see a lot of advisors now putting that on their business cards. Okay, what's new? Streamline registration pro um, process. Just log on with your email address, create a password, and boom, you're in. So easy to navigate, but you'll be um, really, once you log on, you're not going to want to log off. You're going to be so um, entranced with all the beautiful scenery and all the educational tools we have on the site. Um, we have a chat bot, so if you're feeling lonely one night and you want to talk to Kukui, just chat with chat away with the chat bot. Coming soon is Emi Loa, the self-guided fam organizer. Um, if you remember, a few years ago, we had what was called Mahalo Month. That happened every April and May, where you could go back to the islands and re-familiarize yourself uh, with everything the Hawaii had to offer. And then they did away with the program. Well, it was so popular and agents really wanted it, kept asking about it. We're putting it back again. So it should be here hopefully by the end of the year. It's uh, Emi Loa, the self-guided fam organizer. But this is important. It's not going to only be in April and May. It's going to be throughout the entire year. So we have partners who are going to offer you di discounts to go back and see the islands and develop your own personal testimony of this uh, beautiful paradise. And um, if you want to become a master specialist, we're going to have a master specialist interest form also available online. Uh, this is our team here, Hawaii Tourism USA Central. Okay, we have Robin Basil. She is our Senior Director over Travel Industry Partnerships. Many of you, I'm sure, know her. Uh, we just uh, brought on board Alexandra Roth. She's our Regional Director for the Midwest and East Coast. She's been with us uh, since the beginning of the year. She's absolutely incredible. For those of you who have already met her, she's knowledgeable, she's smart, and she has a tremendous amount of the Aloha spirit. And then you have myself, Christy Aldenis. I cover the West Coast. And then uh, for the island chapters, each individual island um, has her own tourist board falls under Hawaii Tourism USA. So you have uh, Miley Brown, Director of Marketing for Kauai Visitors Bureau, Mr. Kainoa Danes, I'm sure a lot of you know him, Director of Sales for Oahu, uh, the beautiful Karishma Chowson, fun, always smiling, just full of ho'okipa, and she is Director of Travel Industry Sales for Oahu. Then we have Julie Yoniyama. She's Director of Sales for Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau. For those of you who remember, and most of you do, Chris Ka'io Okamalie, who is no longer with us, Julie took her place. Uh, she loves it. She has a passion about Maui, extremely knowledgeable. Then we have Julie Bikoi from Molokai. Let me tell you, if you're ever fortunate enough to tour the island with her, you will know about every secret about Molokai. Okay? Tradition, culture, history, lifestyle, she will offer that to you. And then we have uh, the beautiful Deanna Isbester. She's the Director of Sales for the Island of Hawaii. Most of you know her as well. So this is our entire team. Again, you've got HBCB Central, and then the bottom row is going to be all of your island chapters. So with that said, I want to say mahalo nui loa to all of you for coming on board to learn about our islands. And I also want to give a shout out to Kara, who put this webinar together, who was so patient, but she's also vibrant, and she has a lot of whole okipa as well. So with that said, I'm going to turn the time back over to Kara, and we'll answer some of your questions. If I can't, I'll get back to you, I promise. But Kara? Thank you so much, Christy. That was so sweet of you. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into some questions here. It looks like before we get started with questions, just to reiterate, this webinar was recorded. I see that some of you joined a little bit late. Not a problem at all. This will be available on our NACTA YouTube channel as well as on ASTA.org by the end of the week. So, Christy, for some questions, um, based on what you presented, where is Lee? 
Lihui? Lihui. Mm-hmm. Lihui is on the island of Kauai. That's where the major airport is located. It's toward, um, more toward the east end of the island, Lihui Airport. Okay, perfect. And how often do advisors need to renew the tr- their training to main, uh, maintain destination specialist status? That's a good question. We revamped our Hawaii Destination Specialist Program in 2015. So if you if you took it before 2015, we're going to ask that you retake it again so you become active on our website. But if, say you took it in 2016 or 17, you're absolutely fine. We have every time we revamp it, we ask that you retake it, but we haven't done that, and I can't see that happening in another uh, year or two more. So you're fine. Thank you, Christy. Um, how is the North Shore of Kauai doing after the floods? Is Princeville impacted at all? Well, it it was impacted a little bit, but from my understanding, it's getting back to normal. And um, again, for those, you know, I have friends who just came back from Kauai. They said it's beautiful. It's still the Garden Island. Um, the roads are are better, and Princeville is up and running as well. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, It doesn't look like we have any more advisor questions coming in just yet. I'm sure that they will be utilizing your agent portal. Um, I'll go ahead and leave the chat open for a little bit longer just to make sure that we don't have any questions coming in here before we log off. But I did want to say thank you again, Christy. Uh, You did such an amazing job with your presentation, and I greatly appreciate your sweet words as well. As I had mentioned, this webinar was recorded. So if any of you would like to listen to the presentation again or relay joining, it will be available for you to do so. And I also want to take the time to thank all of our advisors who've joined us today. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, and we look forward to all of your feedback. And Christy, no more questions, but it looks like somebody is telling you mahalo, and thank you so much for the great webinar. Oh, mahalo, everybody, and a hui ho until we meet again. Yes, Christy. Thank you so much, everyone. Mahalo. Mahalo, everybody. Aloha.